It is our championship game. There's the trophy from ESPN's Wide World of Sports Complex, HB Fieldhouse, and Missouri taking on number 23, West Virginia. Mountaineers always travel well. They get a good crowd on hand. And, oh, our super celeb, Mickey Mouse, delivering the game ball as we get ready for this one. All right, so here's how we got here. Semifinals, Missouri in a tight one down the stretch, able to get past St. John's and then West Virginia blowing out UCF. Hi, everybody. John Chambi alongside Fran Fraschilla. Hope you've had a great holiday weekend. We get a chance to watch a little more college basketball here tonight with our championship game. Franny, let's start with West Virginia. Bob Huggins' team, they dropped their opener over in Germany without Issa Ahmad. He's suspended until January. How much better have they gotten, though, since that first game? They have gotten better. They're averaging 93 points a game because of that pressure defense, chance to get easy baskets. And how does it happen? A trio of really good guards. You know about Javon Carter. He's the defensive player of the year, reigning in the Big 12, and he can rain down some jumpers when he's on as well. Daxter Miles has started virtually all four seasons for Bob Huggins. He knows how to get the job done. But how about the X Factor, James Beadle Bolden, the sophomore, who's coming off the bench and shooting lights out. They can put points on the board. And meanwhile, on the other side, Conzo Martin in his first season at Mizzou, and it's a little bit of an aspect of the backcourt of West Virginia against the front court of Missouri. Exactly right. There's no Michael Porter Jr. That's history. But his little brother, Jonte, has been a big factor in a quick Missouri start to the season. Versatile, can get a lot of things done. The defense, the three-point shooting. It's also an excellent passer. Jeremiah Tillman, he is a beast down low. 6'11", 260. Key for him, stay out of foul trouble. And then Kevin Perrier, the junior who's had a lot of experience playing in the SEC. Now he's got a chance to have some size around him. He'll score inside. He can also knock down the three. So we get ready to go from HP Fieldhouse. As you check out the Missouri starting lineup. Robertson, Harris, Barnett, Tillman, and Perrier. West Virginia, a couple of seniors and then three sophomores for the experience with Carter and Miles in that backcourt. West Virginia fans making some noise and we're ready to tip. It'll be Kanate and the freshman Tillman from Missouri to jump it up. Carl Hess to throw it into the air. And that one controlled by Mizzou. Blake Harris, the freshman point guard, has got to stay comfortable versus the relentless pressure of the Mountaineer guards. Barnett double team, feed inside. Tillman lost the handle, layup wouldn't go, and then a kick out, an offensive rebound. So Missouri with a pretty good start. That one deflected out of bounds, and you see immediately that aggressive pressure from West Virginia. And you know how much I love deflections, John. It's not a steal, it's not a turnover. But the Tigers have to take it out of bounds. They have to regroup. And by the way, they got to get it in first. It's something that Bob Huggins' staff tracks. And usually, if you're trying to figure out something that correlates to a West Virginia win, deflection is usually a big factor. No question. It, what it does is it reflects effort. Another offensive rebound as it fell into the hands of Harris. And they'll start it over. Just get going here in our championship game. That's a good job by Tillman to get out of that double quick. Robertson might have traveled. Harris now. Puts it on the floor. The feed for Tillman doesn't hit. Barnett launches. And a rebound ripped down by Lamont West. Well, the Mountaineers were on defense that time, John, for a minute five. But they, uh, they weathered the storm, yeah. if you will. Time of possession early edge <laughs> to Mizzou. Good open shots is key for West, for West Virginia tonight. The jump shots have got to be clean. And if you get it inside, you got to get to get yourself to the foul. And that's a contested shot right there. That's something Lamont West, that's driving me crazy now. And there's a hand in his face. West had Barnett closing right out on him. Cassius Robertson here, the transfer from Kanisha. Corner shot won't go for Barnett. 
Carter leading the Mountaineers. He hoists and hits. You know, it's funny, Franny. You don't think about him as a shooter, but he is a guy that can knock it consistently. And I think until Issa Ahmad comes back, he's got to actually pick up the scoring load. Harris is fouled. And I believe they got Kanate. Indeed, they did. Sagaba Kanate with his first foul. Javon Carter he rebounds a little over four, close to six assists. Four and a half steals already. That's amazing. Number two in the country in steal rate, John, at 7%. So what does that mean? Every 17 times down the floor. He's going to get a steal. And that's pretty high in college basketball. Big East or the Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year. All three years he was part of the first team all defense in the Big 12. Self made. That's what you like about him. Came in with no decoration, no hype. He lives in that practice gym. West Virginia by a point early on. West feeding down Kanate. Carter tries another three and hits another. I like it. Rhythm shot. Ball movement per year. Had to back up. Gave him a lot of space. Harris looking for some help. Moves the ball up ahead. And Cassius Robertson. Barnett jumper, that won't go. And the rebound pulled down by Harris. Miles into the paint, hangs, can't hit. Harris, that's a three. And another offensive rebound. Tillman absorbs the contact and puts it in. Outstanding looking freshman from Illinois. Oh, John, he runs, he's strong. The biggest problem with Jeremiah Tillman right now, he commits a foul every four minutes. So they can't keep him on the floor. Big recruit, top 50 recruit. Yeah, the 46 of the ESPN 100. Yeah, and he signed it with Illinois before they changed coaches. Watch Jeremiah Tillman. He is an absolute load inside. Goes about 6'11", 260. Really agile around the basket. I've watched him, John. He's learning to try to play vertical on the defensive end. He's trying to stay out of foul trouble. And this is big because Kanate is the only inside scorer Bob Huggins has. Two early fouls on Kanate. Harris and Miles able to steal that pass. Dexter Miles Jr. Now Carter feeling it. Got it! Javon Carter, nine, Missouri. Two guys on this team I would allow to shoot tough shots. Bolden and Carter. Barnett kicks it across. Robertson, that's off his foot. Machi Bender is checked in. And they get a foul on Dexter Miles Jr. Well, in the early going, friend, Javon Carter knocking it down. He knows what time it is, John. Came out of the gate, shooting it a little slow. Now he's non he's on fire. By Advocate. To learn more comprehensive offering of nutritional products, go to AdvoCare.com. Gildan, love your dad, but don't wear his underwear. Gildan, every thread counts. And ESPN Wide World of Sports Complex at Walt Disney World Resort, the ultimate sports experience for athletes, families, coaches, and fans. Mountaineers, no surprise, traveling well. Got a good crowd of year. And West Virginia off to the 9-4 start. Conzo Martin bring in his prize freshman, Jonte Porter. And you'll see the numbers for themselves. And 
When you say prize freshman, a lot of people thought it would be Michael Porter That's right. Jr., the older brother of Jonte. But uh, this gentleman right here is the uh, patriarch of the Porter family. Eight kids. Mom is with Michael after back surgery. And uh, great connections to the city of Columbia, Missouri. Mike Sr. is the brother-in-law of women's coach Robin Pinchton. They grew up in Columbia. There you see Mike. He was an assistant coach on the women's side. Went to Washington with Lorenzo Romar. Both Porter boys thought they would play at the University of Washington. Romar gets fired. Mike comes home. The boys come with him. And uh, great to see. Carter, a little floater. And the putback wouldn't go there. Harris, point blank, and he couldn't finish. What you love about Jonte is... Michael, Michael, his brother, is the scorer. Jante's one of those guys that does what he can. There's 10 seconds. And there's that West Virginia pressure. But to finish up on Jante, he actually reclassified in order. He was one of the top juniors in the country, but he, he reclassified so that he could come to Missouri, play with his, his brother. And he was number 11 in the ESPN 100 as a junior and then when he reclassified became number 25 as a senior not bad yeah yeah we had him at the Steph Curry camp in August and uh, we all knew that he was going to reclassify he just wanted to have one more go because he's not going to play in the McDonald's game so but I was impressed with him because he does a lot of things well Bender gives off shot clock is under 10 Miles goes to work into the paint. A little bit wild shot and flying in and trying to throw it down as Wesley Harris. So Michael Porter Jr., the number two recruit in the ESPN 100, number two prospect in the draft. He played two minutes in their opener and ended up having a microdiscectomy on his back. That was. November 21st, the surgery in Dallas, L3, L4 on the spine. Both of his sisters are Missouri Tigers. Bree had an injury-riddled career. She's now a student assistant, and Sierra's still on the team on the women's side. Terrific program under Robin Pinchton. How much of an impact would he have made? Michael would have been, uh, you know, he would have been a 22, 23-point scorer, John. You look at what Trey Young did today for Oklahoma, 43. He would have had a couple games like that. He would have been the guy that could carry the scoring. This is still a much improved Missouri team from a year ago, but there were even higher expectations if Michael Jr. were on this roster. Missouri won eight games last year, 8-24, 2-16 in the lead. Jante the rebound. And Jordan Geist. Throw it into the post. Got a mismatch. And they get the foul on Carter as he was trying to mark Jonte Porter. He's basically talking about 6'2", trying to match up on 6'11". Yeah, but as I mentioned earlier, we'll probably say it a few more times, Jonte has a high basketball IQ. He really knows the game. He's one of those guys that gets, he gets eight points, eight rebounds, six assists. It's a great night for him. Nico with the ball, gives off to Geis. West Virginia with the early lead. And Van Leer knocks down a triple. Cullen Van Leer actually had 17 starts last year. Got to play a good bit, and obviously an infusion of talent. And a number of players, including Van Leer, Terrence Phillips, another. Yep, Geis. Time's going to get cut down a bit. If the team is deeper, that goes well. Miles can't hit. Loose ball, battle for it. Geist rips it away. And now Barnett. Van Leer again. And so here's Carter taking West Virginia into the front court. Javon Carter coming off 16 points in the win against UCF. Mountaineers have no inside scoring right now.
Shot blocked there as Parler tried to get it off. Inside. Lamont West. And he gets fouled. Bender had a pretty good look at it. Couldn't put it home. And Lamont West normally isn't attacking in that close to the glass. That's it. Corral it. That's such a great point, John. You know, his jump shot has disappeared momentarily early in the year. But we've watched him fill out. And on this particular team, without Issa Ahmad, he's had to change his role and play more around the basket. This is only a sophomore who came to West Virginia when he was 16. As a sophomore, took a red shirt. Mm -hmm. So he is still learning and super young. James Bolden coming in for... West Virginia. This West Virginia team is a unique team because they have two senior guards who have won a lot of games, but they have seven sophomores and a freshman in the rest of the rotation. Toss up ahead, and that one ends up out of bounds. It's a turnover. That's a freshman mistake by Harris, throwing a pass that's Difficult to catch. West Virginia in this tournament forcing just a shade under 26 turnovers per game and turning it into offense. That one way off the mark from Bender. There's a reason the defender was 15 feet off of Maji Bender. Right. <laughs> Look inside, Tillman tried to reverse, couldn't hit, but he gets fouled. Foul on Machi Bender. And here's Tillman averaging 8.7 and four rebounds a game. Kanate on the bench right now. He's got two fouls. We'll see how long he stays. Yeah, it's a good question because as long as West Virginia is leading or this game is close, Bob Huggins, it's been my feeling that he normally doesn't play a guy who's got two. So we might not see Kanate for another 12 minutes. Tillman gets the second. Kanate continues to watch. Two-point game. West Virginia, the Mountaineers 0 for their last 9 from the floor. We saw them struggle at times offensively against Marist. Gonna foul down low, and that'll be on Blake Harris. More college basketball coming your way. The ACC Big Ten Challenge Wednesday night, Michigan. Thinking on the ninth-ranked Tar Heels Chapel Hill. That's at 7.30. And then number one Duke in Indiana from Assembly Hall. Best game of the night, in my opinion, on ESPN2 will be Miami traveling to Minnesota. <laughs> you know why. Because you're doing it. Yeah. That's right. But, but. No, two, that'll be a good game. Two top 15 teams. And uh, amazing story yesterday as Minnesota beat Alabama. And Alabama... Finished the game with three players. You're going to see if Jim Laranega's got a, a play he might run with three guys on the court. I, I, you know what? I'm just disappointed in that go to power play. Barnett takes it away from Carter. Finger roll would go. Both teams have had some up-close looks and haven't been able to hit. Ten eight Mountaineers, under 12 to go. There's the lob, and that'll go. Nice look by Bender. Pretty. I'll tell you what's interesting. They've been down screening, down screening, down screen for the shooters. That time Carter back screened. Got the lob. Harris trying to find Tillman. Loose ball. And tracked down by Wesley Harris. Harler, shot blocked. That's the second time he's had a three-point attempt blocked. We don't, 
Little wrinkle right here. We've been back screening. Easy play. It's good recognition by Bender. Back here at ESPN's Wide World of Sports. This magnificent complex. 12-8 West Virginia with the early lead. There's the baseball field. And you get a chance to coach some of these guys, but the, the, the characters got a chance to, to warm up a bit. The skill level is a work in progress, John. I'll just say that. Had a great time with Chip and Dale, Goofy, Mickey. You now I told Goofy, you know, I said, Goofy, why the long face? Yeah, no, I... Huh? You, you know, you're out here playing basketball. Right. Should be happy. Well, here's something we're tracking tonight, okay, John? West Virginia, we said it the other night. They're shooting too many shots with a hand in their face. Yeah. The ball has to move a little bit more. And if there's a defender in front of you, drive it into the paint and get your scoring inside from your guards by attacking. Well, friend, you talked about Lamont West and his disappearing jump shot for the moment. I feel like he's just made bad choices. Agree. Cassius Robertson able to knock it down. The grad transfer from Canisius. He made 41% of his threes last year. A man out of Toronto. Well, they get the shove down low as the freshman Teddy Allen hits the deck. Now let's put it, let's get your let's get our let's get inside Bob Huggins's mind. The freshman comes in. What's the first thing they do? They post him. You see the body, right? Bob Huggins looking for somebody with Kanadi in foul trouble to score in the low post area, draw some fouls. Bolden, step back jumper, got it. Now he's the X factor. We know he can put the ball in the basket. I mentioned that what they get here. They got Teddy Allen for holding, but watch Bolden now. Look at the separation. The step back. I mentioned, John, there's two guys on this West Virginia team I would allow to play with a free conscience. Yep. Carter and Bolden yep. offensively. Bolden arguably their best shooter. That was foul number seven on West Virginia. So one and one here. And per year, able to knock it down. He started every game last year. Led them in minutes, was second in points per game. As you mentioned to me before the game, he shoots their technical fouls too, and why not? He was, he's hovering around 80 right now. Jonte Porter will come back into the game. Yeah, that foul, that last foul by, on, that Teddy Allen committed, it's just a process of learning college basketball and what you can and can't do as a young player defensively. Miles gives off. Hold it. One-handed shot. That wouldn't go, but the follow there as Wesley Harris swoops in for the slam. Because Bolden shoots a soft shot, that ball hung up on the rim long enough for Harris to run into that. Out of bounds. It'll stay with Missouri. Bob Huggins saying to James Breeding, there is a travel there. Bob is posturing right now. Another 10 to go here. Three-point West Virginia lead. And 
George Geist, the junior handling. Porter puts it on the floor. He gets fouled there. Take a look at the other end. You yep. mentioned the, the soft touch by Bolden and leads to a, a putback. Yep, even this floater right here. Watch how soft it is. Lays up on the rim, and that allows the sophomore from Jackson, Mississippi, Harris, to clean up on the backside. Well, the free throw line has been a big part of Missouri's success. 88% from the strike. You see those two by Porter at 6'10". Neither one of them hit the rim. Seven for eight in this one. Very small West Virginia team. This is not like a Huggins team, at least recently. Miles steps back, and the jumper will go. So what's Bob do? Starts to post his guards. Allen, that time Miles. Feed inside, and that'll go per year. Good dump off by Jordan Geist. And you know how you know Jordan Geist is a tough guy? His junior college coach was Billy Gillespie. Oh, man. The former coach at Texas A&M. Absolutely. Texas El Paso, Texas Tech, and, of course, Kentucky. Great basketball coach. Miles from way downtown and drills it. Daxter Miles Jr. with a huge bucket. Watch the kick out. Late challenge. And see that rhythm shot, John? Although the defender was in the vicinity, Van Leer, it never disrupted Miles' shooting form. And that's what we call a semi-contested shot. When you play good defenses during the course of the year, that's the kind of shot you have to make. You got a foul on Geis, so West Virginia kept it. And now eventually it saved Carter. And they're going to get a foul on the Mountaineers. I believe they got Lamont West. That's number one on him. And they'll march it down to the other end. Per year at the line, a one and one spot. This guy played at Blue Springs South. The Kansas City area. The team won a state title at Mizzou Arena. Obviously, the first two years, he played a lot without much success. And I talked to him at, uh, before the season, and uh, he was very willing to kind of take a back seat to Michael Porter, Jonte, Tillman, in order to win. And now, all of a sudden, he becomes just as important as he was the first two years. They need his leadership. A rare miss, a three-point advantage for the Mountaineers. On a switching out top. Carter gets a piece of the paint to the corner. Bolden, three in and out. Terrence Phillips into the game for Mizzou. Yeah, they get the foul on Carter. That is his second. Break in the action. Tight one. It's our championship game here at HB Fieldhouse. The Advocare Invitational Championship game, West Virginia by three. Fran, one of the things we've seen here in Orlando is with the Missouri Tigers, it's not one guy that's going to get you, it's the balance. And I mean, look at that, five guys in the tourney averaging 11 and a half or better. Yeah, it's a good sign for Conzo Martin as he builds his own culture. Ball's moving pretty well. He's got some, he's got some guys that really 
are good team players and Jonte Porter comes to mind certainly although he's the leading scorer he's also a pretty good distributor Jordan Barnett at the line former Texas Longhorn recruited by Rick Barnes he grew up in St. Louis so he's back close to home two hours away down interstate 70 he's a guy who can make some shots he can he's athletic he's, he defends Conzo Martin kind of player actually Conzo was a great player, obviously, at East St. Louis. His high school teammate was a guy named Alfonso Ellis, yeah. John, right? Great basketball, great athletes out of East St. Louis, Illinois, and across the river. Same place that their prize freshman, Jeremiah Tillman, came from. Miles directing traffic. What do we got? Coaching yeah. box Co warning. Yep. The coaching box has been extended this year, 10 feet towards midcourt for both coaches, but it doesn't, uh, out on the floor is probably not what the new rule change had in mind. It's another contested shot. Great job, shot block. Robertson. And he missed the layup. Phillips able to collect. Porter a triple. Got it. And Missouri has the lead. Tigers have taken the lead. Missouri's taking the lead on the Porter three-pointer. Here's Miles. Look at that length on Jonte Porter. Yep. And then watch what he does at the other end, John. This is six foot ten. Missed shot. Goes right to get to the three-point line. How about that? Look at that rhythm. Boom. Love this kid. There's a lot of things to help you win, and points are probably the least of the things that he likes to do. Now, there's a theme building right now for West Virginia, and that is... If you're going to shoot threes and the defense closes, you better learn to shot fake and get by those guys because they're challenging every jump shot virtually. So that's how you stop with it's one of, avoid contested shots. Once again. you swing the ball to a seat, that now with him I don't mind. Yeah. Because of what he does. He you makes tough shots. Start. Yes. Yep. With him I don't mind because he's a shot maker. But these other guys, you've got to shot fake your defender and get into the paint and get an advantage of four on three, three on four. To the corner, Barnett wide open, and he buries it. And Missouri by two. And that's the kind of ball movement that West Virginia needs on the other end. Good swing of the ball on Missouri. And if they press you out top, you must drive the basketball if you are a West Virginia guard. Allen gives off Bolden. That's from deep. And a rebound yanked down by Porter. Robertson gets it for three. Well, when they made their push against St. John's, they just simply got hot from the three-point line. That was really the difference in the win in the semifinals. And they've gotten hot from three tonight. And a great delivery by Terrence Phillips, who was a starter last year. He's adjusting to coming off the bench. Terrence Phillips. He is the younger brother of Brandon Jennings. He's been a starter for much of his career. At this point in time, he's not. But you love the fact that he comes off the bench, uses that speed and quickness, and puts it right on the money. Well, like Brandon Jennings went to Oak Hill. They get the foul on uh, Brandon Jennings' little brother. See, Ter Terrence Phillips right there. He's guarding Miles. The one thing you don't do is you don't let him cut to the basket. You get on the inside and you force him to go to the corner. Yeah. 
And we welcome those of you that have been watching the Grey Cup. We're here at ESPN's Wide World of Sports Complex, HP Fieldhouse, and it is the championship game of the Advocare Invitational. West Virginia taking on Missouri. Sagaba Kanate has picked up a couple of early fouls and has been anchored to the bench since. So Kanate hanging out, watching, and their top and really only post threat has been seeded for most of this game. And that's why you see 26 points from a West Virginia team that since that loss to Texas A&M to start the season was averaging about 93. They have no inside-outside balance right now without Kanate. I'll give him that. Robertson buries it. One thing he does is shoot the ball from deep, and so you got to make him a driver. He's got nine now. Leads him in minutes, points, and steals per game. Cassius Robertson. The grad senior. All of a sudden, Missouri by six. And Carter's out there with two, John. That tells you something. Allen hesitates, flips it up, and in. Big bucket from the freshman. Good looking, solid, strong body, 6'6. Six, six. And we know he can score because he averaged 30 points plus at Boys Town High in Nebraska the last, last year. Robertson is rejected. Who they get the foul on? They called it on Miles, although the block was clean. Yeah, the block from Bender certainly clean. Well, the official was right there, so let's see what they got. And I think he got him. I agree. He got him. Carl Hess, 12 feet away. So Miles picks up his second. And Robertson knocks it down. Fran, what's changed for West Virginia defensively? Why has Missouri started to get hot? Well, I think part of, part of the reason, John, is they've gotten used to the pressure. But more importantly, when you're not scoring, which West Virginia hasn't, they got 28 points. Yep. You can't set up your press Virginia. Yeah, so makes on the offensive end aid your ability to, to press. Absolutely. Now, this is a problem, too, because you can see that in this tournament, they have been red hot, the Tigers, from behind the yard. But they wouldn't get the open shots, John, if West Virginia scores, set up, sets up the press, and then creates that havoc full court. Miles. Gets that front end. Baxter Miles with eight. The senior from Baltimore. Played at Dunbar in Baltimore. For actually for a former Mountaineer, Cyrus Jones. He's had a, a terrific career. Another one of those guys that uh, wasn't on the big lit, the recruiting yep. list, right? Robertson picks up the dribble, kicks to the corner. And that one rejected by Rout. Geist wanted the foul as he had gotten Carter in the air. And that's that shot picking we've talked about, right? Watch him get, he gets Carter in the air, but watch, watch Rout. Rout does a phenomenal job of staying on the ground until Geist got himself in the air. Then he played straight up. Former walk-on, who's earned a scholarship. Talked about Logan Rout. Tillman jumper, that won't go. Rebound inside, and then the ball stripped away, and then they get a foul. It's either on Barnett or Porter. It'll be on Jonte Porter. Missouri by three. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball. Missouri leading by three, our championship game, the Advocare Invitational. And 
All right, Fran Fraschilla, let's talk about contested shots and semi-contested shots. Well, we never take contested shots, okay, because they're a low percentage shot. We all know that. Defenders right in your grill. Very few players have the license to shoot a contested shot. But against good defense, and here's another example, you must make semi-contested shots. What do I mean by that? All right, let's freeze it right there. Now, look at the, dis the distance right here. Distance between these two, uh, the shooter and the defender. Roll it. He's in his rhythm, and he's going to make that shot. So what do we have, John? This is a contested shot. We don't take those shots. But this shot right here, I'm in my rhythm. The defender's closing, but he's coming late. Against good defenses, you have to take and make this shot. And West Virginia right now is struggling between the difference of what a contested shot is and a semi-contested shot. And the semi-contested shots represent, at least in your estimation, really the majority of, of the shots that you're going to get in a college game, right? Against good defenses, certainly that's the case. Yeah. So again, 45% from the floor on the season, and Missouri's held them to 34% so far tonight. Miles going to the line. And a one and one spot for Dax. They're shooting it at 63% so far this year. And gets the first. This is survival time for West Virginia. By that I mean just get to the half close, tied or up a little bit. You've played without your best inside player in Kanate because of the two fouls. Carter as well with two fouls. And worth noting, Daxter Miles has two also. They break pressure pretty easily, and now it's Geist into the front court. Under four to go here, first half of our championship game. Boog Shabby, Fran Fraschilla, thanks for joining us here from HB Fieldhouse in Orlando. Per year, air ball, Allen able to grab it. a little bit of clock here. And again, the object is to get to halftime just within striking distance or maybe you go on a run here, but you're playing without your best inside guy. Allen looking for some help. Carter puts it on the floor and then travels. He's kind of tripped over his own feet that time. Well, we talked about it in the open, Missouri, their advantage would be in the front court, possibly. That has played out. 18-7, a front court scoring advantage, and especially highlighted by Kanate being on the bench with the foul issues. That time a good closeout, good challenge. Kick out, Geist the three, got it. And that happened because West Virginia gambled on the steal. And when they didn't get the steal, they were forced to play four on five, and Missouri, good ball movement to the open Geist. Missouri is seven for 12 from three. Allen gets that jumper to go. Just absorbed a little bit of contact, and then step back and knock it down. Now they're very high on this guy because they know he can put the ball in the basket. It's about learning the other things that go along with being a Bob Huggins player. Effort without fouling. And a loose ball. I believe they got Tillman with that one. That's and it'll be Tillman's first. Yeah, but, that's the good news, John. But it is foul number 10. And now it is double bonus time the rest of the way. Both teams. Tillman averaging a foul every four minutes coming into today's game. Console Martin getting a, an explanation for something from James Breed. Allen gets the first. <laughs>
These are good minutes for Teddy Allen. Yeah, because, no doubt. Right? Because to me, John, they need more scoring. Not just now, but over the course of the season. Well, Allen comes out. Wesley Harris checks in. I think that's probably the best stretch we've seen from Allen over the course of the, the four days and three games. Agreed. Pressure here. Well, Miles had to let up just a little because he's playing with two fouls. As is Carter. Almost lost it. And Robertson traveled. Not a pure point guard, Robertson, and good pressure by Dax Miles without fouling. West Virginia, so far in this one, they've only turned it over twice. Missouri's turned it over seven times. Well, and given what West Virginia's done in this tournament, what they've done all season, seven's not too bad. Yep. They haven't really been able to exert pressure in West Virginia because of the foul trouble. We may see more of that in the second half. West Virginia really coming off a thumping of UCF in the semifinals. Miles can't hit. Rebound for Missouri. Here's Geist on the move. And a good recovery. Geist wanted to pull the trigger. Nice job by West to help. And get back to his own man. Geist inside. Tillman trying to follow. Can't. Barnett is there. And he puts it in. And Missouri back on top. Carter the step back. Oh. Got a push off. And they got a push off. Yep. And that is number three. Carter uses the step back a lot, John. We've seen it. Uh, we've watched it for four years. And when you're going to your right, it's harder to step back. There you see the left arm extended. Didn't look like much. But he's got to be more cautious with two fouls. Lear. And Robertson had trouble securing that. Shot clock now is under 10. Barnett launches. Short. Rebound track down Harris. About 16 seconds differential shot clock to game clock. Let's see if they can find Bolden maybe. West off the mark. That one tipped out of bounds, and it belongs to Missouri. 18 and a half seconds to go here in the first half. Coming up on the Land Rover Halftime Report. It'll be Adnan Burke and Seth Greenberg recapping the PK80 championship action. And breaking down the first half of our game. Missouri calls time, 13-7 to go. All right, the 19th annual Big Ten ACC Challenge rolls on Thursday night from the Breslin Center in East Lansing. The 13th-ranked Fighting Irish take on the second-ranked Spartans. How about Bonzi Colson, the senior? Of course, his dad was an outstanding player at the University of Rhode Island, longtime coach as well. And it's early, John. A lot of guys coming out of nowhere, but he was my preseason player of the year. Of course, uh, just amazing, you know, the, the first couple weeks of the season. Uh, BK80 was been fabulous. Maui as well. So much great basketball going on. Who would have thought Arizona would go 0-3 in the Bahamas? Last time, a team that was ranked number two in the country lost three games in a row. 1986-87, Louisville Cardinals. They lost all three in, the, in Alaska. Barnett inside, kicks out. 
Geis fires and hits. That's huge. A five-point lead as the basketball gets away. Geist is a tough joker. Now, if you're Dax Miles, you got five. You have five dribbles once you catch it. If you're Geist, you want to turn them in the backcourt without fouling. Carter's in. Interesting. See if Carter can get a, a run. If he catches it, he's got five dribbles. Got some space here. Carter. There it is. Jumper no good. As that shot was contested. Well, Carter with the nine points, but the three fouls factored in late. And Missouri knocking down eight three-pointers. Eight for 14 for the Tigers. That's the story. 41-36. Missouri leading West Virginia at the half. Stay tuned for the Land Rover Halftime Report. And that's coming up right after these messages. Complex, the Advocate Invitational Championship game, and at the half, Missouri leading 41 to 36. Hey there, everybody, John Chomby and Fran Fraschilla, West Virginia. They weren't really able to assert themselves defensively the way we're, we're used to seeing. And one of the big things that we've seen in this game, Missouri has knocked down the three-point shot, and that's been crucial to their previous two wins, and it's been crucial here in the first half. No question about it. 49% uh, from three. That's great. I don't care if you're the Golden State Warriors. That's outstanding. They've really shot it well, and they move the ball well, John. That's been the most impressive thing to me. Uh, Conzo Martin has uh, established a culture of toughness and also togetherness so the ball doesn't stick. Look at that right there. That's great ball movement right there. Not that it's an easy shot if you're open, but it's a lot easier without a guy flying at you. There's no question about that. And you got to hit a deep one or two on occasion. That's a heat check right there. Cassius Robertson knocking down three three-pointers. All right, so for West Virginia, what's got to change? Because the pressure at least after an early onslaught, didn't seem to bother Missouri. Well, part of the reason it didn't bother them is because uh, West Virginia was in foul trouble, and so they were more cautious with their press defense. And by the way, their best player, Javon Carter, now has three fouls, yeah. so he's still going to have to be conservative. Kanate being on the bench, I think, played a, a factor as well, just from the standpoint of, you know, they're basically playing four out and trying different things to, to post up their guard. They are. They have no inside scoring without Kanate. Issa Ahmad's not back till January. Elijah Macon left early. So this is a perimeter-oriented team. They're going to have to score off their defense, which we know they're capable of doing. But obviously, so far tonight, Missouri's been very effective at neutralizing that. So the turnover is having come for West Virginia. We'll see how it plays out. Second half, 41-36, our score at the break. This has been the Land Rover Halftime Report from HP Fieldhouse. You're watching ESPN's Feast Week presented by Lowe's. This is the Advocare Invitational. And we get ready for second half action here from HP Fieldhouse. Missouri leading number 23, West Virginia, 41-36. 36. Coaching a crucial factor here at the Advocare. And, of course, former coach Fran Fraschilla got a chance to coach these special players. Uh-huh. All right, let me take it. All right, I, let's, 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 uh, let's, get a, let's get a good trap, Chippendale. We ready? Okay. Good trap and don't foul. Here we go. Let's work on this, okay? Let's make Coach Huggins proud. Here we go. Throw it in, Mickey. All right. Hi, Goofy. Start to dribble it. Good trap. Go trap. Pick up your dribble. Good trap. Good. 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 Where's the open man? <laughs> goofy. That's a goofy pass. How could you be so goofy? No, 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 no. It's okay. No, look. No long face. I don't need a long face. Give me a hug, man. It's gonna be okay. Good job. Good job, guys. Okay, here we go. On three. One, two, three. Right. Where dreams come true. Let's get goofy. 
Oh, baby. You were amazing. Have a magical day. Um, no. Good, how did know. you feel? I mean, who, who's who got some talent of that group? I thought Goofy was dogging it. I wasn't happy with his effort, you know. And, uh, you know, we had Mickey Mouse. It was a Mickey. It was a, it was a mouse, mouse trap. trap. Yeah, yeah, we had a mouse trap, but I don't know. I'm, I'm not going back to coaching. I'm going to stay here with you. It's a lot easier. Well, again, you gotta you got to find better players is really what it, what it gets to. I need a financial advisor or an agent <laughs> to get me some players, John. All right, first half stats now as we get ready to go. Missouri shooting 42% from the floor, but that three-point stat, that's the, the the key one. Eight for 14 for Mizzou, and West Virginia just 33%. And I think it gets interesting, Fran, to start this second half to look at what will it be like with West Virginia out there, and can they, they do some stuff with Kanate on the court, and also Carter has those three fouls so a fourth would be crucial well, let me give you a couple more numbers to think about missouri only has 11 field goals in the first half but eight of them are threes and of the 11 field goals they have nine assists so the pressure has really been handled quite well by missouri and let's see if west virginia can ratchet that up a little bit Carter has three fouls. He's got to be cautious. Immediately, Kanate flips it up and in as that was over the freshman Tillman. And that came right out of the last timeout by Bob Huggins. So you see what he's trying to draw up. Go right inside to Kanate. Guys toss inside, and that'll go. Now, Tillman answers. How good is that coaching? Because with Kanate having two fouls, Conzo Martin goes right back at Tillman, knowing that Kanate does not want to sit on the bench. Good chess match early. Kanate, the jumper. That's off the mark. And Geist will take it the other way. Missouri coming down here, of course, without Michael Porter Jr. is done for the year. They played well here in Orlando. Tillman, nice three. Of pumps fake, pump, yep. pump fakes, and he gets fouled. And he gets fouled by Kanate, I believe, John. Yep. And and it's, you know what? you got to be smarter than that. He came down on the shooter. Watch him come down. See, now here's what I know. And, and Kanate looks like he's coming out, but you have to continue to go inside of Kanate. Kanate's coming out, so it doesn't matter. But I, if I were Kanate, I wouldn't have shot the last jump shot on the other end. I would have yeah. waited to go inside. Well, it looks like Machi Bender is going to check into the game. If there's not a stoppage in play when Missouri gets it back, I would wait and go inside at Tillman again and see if I can pick up a fourth. Feet inside. Kanate lost the hand. See? Walk it up right now. Don't run. And go inside to Tillman. And they get an offensive uh, foul. That one charged to Tillman. It's... Kanate did a good job to sell it. Yep, Kanate did a good job of selling it, but the freshman has been known. Take a look right here. Uh, see, that? You, that's a nickel-dime call right there. Yeah. Both ways now. you got to let these guys play a little bit. But Kanate, a sophomore, starting to learn the ropes. Tell me going to the bench. He's got two. Kanate sits. gives off Carter. Good job by Missouri. They've smothered the inside triangle. Nothing easy. Carter off balance. Shot short. Geist on the move. Barnett and the finger roll will go. Good hustle by Missouri. Right now, West Virginia totally out of rhythm because of the foul trouble.
Watch five black shirts in the paint. Bender. Oh, man. Porter looked like he got a lot of the ball, but the foul called on Jante, and that's his third. Three foul number 11, Jante Porter. He's third team second. Brand for West Virginia, one of the things it seems they just they can't seem to get Lamont West in a spot where he's comfortable offensively, where it, it feels like he's in a, a good position to take a shot that he likes. Yeah, John, this is a different Lamont West than the guy we saw last year because he was a jump shooter who played off all those other outstanding players around him. He's being asked to change his role right now, play more inside. And there's no doubt that the jump shots are forced and they're challenged, and that's not him, and the percentages show it. Seven-point game here. The Advocare Invitational. It's our championship. But not a good decision on that back cut. Good, good help side by Miles. West inside. Bender cleans it up and gets rejected. Up, oh, Robertson, short on that shot. Loose ball inside per year, not able to hit for the put back there from Barnett. Very active Jordan Barnett tonight. Arguably the most athletic, athletic player on that perimeter. Barnett's got 11. Too much standing around. There's no flow right now for West Virginia. Carter goes to work. Pull up. That won't go. And a shot clock violation. Missouri doing a great job on the defensive end. Listen, Tonto Martin, he played for a guy named Gene Cady. And <laughs> part of his coaching style has been tough, hard-nosed man-to-man. And what they've particularly done in this game and in the second half is five black jerseys inside the three-point line. So they're smothering drives and they're smothering post-ups. Guys handling with miles all over him, steps back. And now Robertson. West pops out. Uh, Cassius Robertson. And takes it away. West kicks it up ahead. Carter. And they get the foul. So it'll be the foul on Barnett. Javon Carter will shoot two when we return. Missouri, the Tigers, looking good. And they lead by nine. PN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Lowe's. Hurry in today for huge savings on all things winter. Back here in Orlando, the Advocare Invitational. And Missouri up on West Virginia, 48-39. Missouri does have a bit of a size advantage, and grabbing the rebounds has been key to their wins previously. It's continued tonight. Look at the rebound margin. Yeah, no question. Tillman and Perrier and Barnett. Of course, Jonte Porter. My good buddy Norm Stewart's probably watching from Palm Springs right now, and he he loves this kind of Missouri basketball. I can tell you, tough, hard-nosed, and dominating the backboards. Here's Javad Carter so far in this one with nine points. Does have the three fouls. He made three threes in the first four minutes of the game, and he's going kind of quiet since then. Books those two and turns it into a seven-point game. And he's got to be cautious because he's got three. I like Geist, the smart, tough, hard-nosed player. Nice look inside. And one. Tillman absorbs the contact. 
They get Bender on the foul, and the freshman will go to the line. Remember, pick and roll is about creating indecision at the point of the screen. So there it is. You see Bender stays too high, too long, and there's no help from the backside. Why? Because Carter cannot come over and challenge Tillman or even foul him and make him make free throws, John, because he's got three fouls. You see from Tillman, how good could he end up being? There's a big offensive rebound and a put back for Barnett. Well, Barnett's been outstanding. Tillman is a ridiculous athlete. Shot blocker runs the floor. He's a very impressive young guy. He's got a long way to go offensively, but he definitely has all the tools. Miles jumper off the mark. Loose ball tip won't go. Tillman the board. Huge advantage in the front court for Missouri. Robertson hesitated, kicked down, and Barnett buries it. Biggest lead of the game, it's up to 14. There's no rim protection right now for West Virginia without Kanate. And so the lane is open for drives. That, that brings the defense into the paint and opens up the drive and kick. Tiger fans in the house enjoying it. And Mizzou leading 55-41. Tigers fans enjoying it here, second half, and Missouri had a 14-5 run. 55-41 is our score. Three-point shooting here tonight, and Missouri 9 for 17. I'll tell you what's been impressive about Missouri offensively, John. They're not only shooting the three ball well, but they're also able to go inside to Jeremiah Tillman, who has stayed out of foul trouble tonight, and that's a godsend for Coach Conzo Martin. You look at that young man, and you see a work in progress. 6'11", about 260. He doesn't even look 260. Yep. Um, but uh, highly athletic. Originally committed to Illinois, as you mentioned, and then... John Gross moving on. Kanate back now with the three. Carter with three. But at this point in time, Bob Huggins can't afford to let this lead get any larger. West not able to hit. Fight for the loose ball. And eventually it ends up with Wesley Harris. Got a mismatch inside, but a good job by switching back by Tillman. And Tillman talks. You watch him. He's out there talking. Good sign for a freshman. Miles launches and hits. Big three, and they needed that. 14 for Dax. You know, we've seen... Oh, see, I like this now. They're going to put Harris on Geis because Geis is the primary ball handler right now. But I would post up Barnett. Shot short, ends up with Carter. Harris puts it on the floor and gets fouled. John, we talked early in the game about not taking bad shots, but use the shot fake. Perfect example right there, right there by Harris. Defender closed, and he lifted him with the shot fake. Foul on Tillman, his third. Jonte Porter is about to check back in. So Tillman will grab a seat. Freshman is giving them good minutes. And a short rebound Porter. See Harris at 6'8", can heat up Geist a little bit in a 1-3-1 zone. So a little bit, a little more adjusting by Bob Huggins. Looking for some defensive answers. 
The lead is 10 for Missouri. Robertson kicks to Barnett. And Kanate ends up with a rebound. Here's West up ahead of the pack, lays it in. And Missouri calls timeout. So it's turned into an eight point game. 12.57 to go. And West Virginia make a push and continue to cut into this lead. All right, week 12, Monday Night Football. The matchup takes us to Baltimore. As it'll be the Texans and the Ravens. And that'll be tomorrow night, 8.15 Eastern Time. Monday Night Countdown kicks off at 6 Eastern on ESPN. So what you're going to watch for, John, coming out of this timeout is does West Virginia stay in the 1-3-1? Because that last possession jump shot was challenged. And does Missouri make the adjustment and have a 1-3-1 zone offense? This is this is like in baseball hitting a knuckleball. You see a knuckleball, what, a couple times a year? Maybe, yeah. Maybe. Same thing with the 1-3-1. So you don't work on 1-3-1 offense very much. Yep, they're still in it. Barnett, and there's Miles stepping into the passing lane. Miles weaving. Oh, and good then, hustle. Great job by Barnett to steal it. Geis now the other way. Porter. And that three wouldn't go. Miles box out well. West Virginia, you got Kanate inside. Miles tries, can't hit, and Porter with the rebound. This is Barnett. Game clock under 12 now. Can't tell if West Virginia's in zone or man. I think they're in man off the miss, and Miles needs a blow. Jumper won't go, loose ball. And eventually it ends up with Missouri. Robertson kick out, Geist. Oh, that was halfway down. Another loose ball, which way does it go? Missouri basketball. Jonte Porter got about a hand on about four of those rebounds. Missouri with the hustle on the backboards. Well, it's our championship game, and there's the trophy, the Avercare Invitational from ESPN's Wide World of Sports Complex. And right now, 11.21 to go, and it's Missouri leading by eight. One of the things that shifted, Fran, is that Missouri's gone a little cold from three, and West Virginia has played into that in terms of defensively what they've done. Yes, they have. Changed their defense. They tried to go to that 1-3-1. One, one. They've got more length out on the perimeter so they're challenging those shots but give missouri credit john they are at least seemingly dominating the backboards 14 offensive rebounds tonight that's going to be a staple of missouri basketball this season because of their size and their activity missouri plus 11 in the rebounding department geist wide open shot but it was short and guess who porter with the rebound per year dagger Man, that's what we call a dagger, an offensive rebound. Listen, Kevin. listen, coaches, high school coaches, an offensive rebound, when you kick it out to an open three, we call it a dagger. That's a dagger three because it really sticks West Virginia right in the heart. Nice move there by the freshman, Teddy Allen. But you're right, Kevin, per year with that big three-pointer. So a nine-point game. Quietly, John, Jante Porter is dominating this game. 
Just look at that ball movement. Look at that ball movement. Right there, and it's per year again. Yep. Per year did not get these kind of shots last year. He was right. a low percentage shooter, both inside and outside the arc. He's got 11 tonight. He started every game last year. Jonte Porter is dominating this game on both ends tonight. Carter able to knock it down. Fran, one thing we have not seen in the second half much of from West Virginia, that's James Bolden. No, you're right. And you would think they could use his scoring, but Hugs has not gone to him. Van Leer. Foul on Missouri there. Yeah, watch Jonte Porter now. I had to look at the stat sheet to see how many points he has, John. He's only got five, but plays like this are the reason he's dominating the game. Take a look. Watch the quick reversal right there. Kevin per year should take that young man out to lunch when they get back to Columbia. <laughs> no, he was per year was a very inefficient player the first two years part because there was not that much talent around him. Allen shot blocked as he turned right into the defense. Guess who? Barnett. Now Phillips. And that jumper is good. It's a two. West kick to Carter, three, won't go per year with the rebound. And Missouri is led by as many as 14 in this one. They're in that 1-3-1 one, one again. Let's see if they can extend. Barnett got it. Huge. Yep. The ball movement's been exquisite. And it's hard for that back line guy on the 1-3-1 one, one to go corner to corner. Barnett with 19 to lead all scores. And they get the block on Phillips. Watch the ball movement now. The bottom player in that zone defense has got to get out there. and he, He's not even in your picture until it's too late, John. Carter, Kanate and Miles. Miles rips away the offensive rebound and they'll get another shot at it. Kanate wants the ball. I throw it into the big guy. Sets the screen and Porter drops back defensively. West, contested shot. Now Phillips up ahead. Robertson there's and Porter. there's Porter. Yep. There he and is. The yep. He has been sensational. I don't care who scores points for Missouri tonight. The most valuable player in, on this team is Jonte Porter, who, by the way, just turned 18 last week. He is an example of being a great teammate. He has been a magnet. Biggest lead of the night for Mizzou. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Advocare. To learn more about the comprehensive offering of nutritional products, go to Advocare.com. And Gildan. Love your dad, but don't wear his underwear. Gildan. Every thread counts. John Chambi, Fran Priscilla back here. The championship game of the Advocare Invitational. Missouri by 16. Jonte Porter has been all over the place. Absolutely, John. He's, he's got seven points, nine rebounds, two assists, four blocks. And his unselfishness is contagious. And why do I say that? Because Missouri's got 17 assists on 22 field goals. 
And that young man moves the ball. Look at it. Look at that stat line. It's not going to overwhelm you in terms of his scoring. There's a lot of good team stuff on that stat line. He doesn't start. Comes off the bench. They double team Kanate. Kick out Harris. And a rebound Barnett. Carl Hess and James Breeding. So there'll be no foul. An inadvertent whistle. So the ball was in the possession of Missouri and they will keep it. James Breeding said there was no foul. Kanate was the one that hit the deck. Let's watch what happened. Just, you know, ball, ball was dead and he, he just tripped over the guy's foot. That was really close to 10 seconds. The entire West yeah. Virginia bench jumping up. Given that there's 18 on the clock now, and it seemed, uh, it did seem like they didn't get it over in time. 7.20 to go in this one. And Missouri has built a big lead. Wow, Geis tried to throw it off Carter, and he snatched it away and laid it in. And a travel. Watch this. Oh, man. Geis tried to throw it off him, and Carter caught it. Two quick turnovers for Geist. That's pretty good. Good catch. West Virginia has not been able to score quickly tonight because they haven't got much out of their press. They're going to have to have a hurry-up offense here. One in one spot. They got Robertson on the foul, his second. So for Bob Huggins' team, they've been forcing just under 26 turnovers in the first two games of this tournament. Only 11 tonight. Keep this in mind down the stretch, John. They've committed 12 fouls in the first half, only two in the second half. So what does that tell you? They can be more aggressive the next four minutes or so. And at some point, they're going to need to get to the bonus if they're still behind so they can yep. begin to foul. Dexter Miles with 15. Make it 16. And the lead is a dozen. And here's that pressure from West Virginia. Barnett into the front court. And Barnett being harassed by Robertson, and now they'll back it out. Gonzo Martin saying, all right, hang on. Time to go inside. Good hustle by Harris. Good job uh, by Harris. Right away. Threw it up ahead, and Porter was there to intercept. Yep. Porter right on the spot again. That gives Missouri a new shot clock. Carter able to take it away. And it'll be Missouri basketball. Watch Carter right here. Remember, we said don't spin. I think he's trying to call timeout. And he said, I call timeout. He wasn't able to signal, obviously, but right. verbal or visual. Good Good hands steal. by Miles. Man, they have been active the last couple of minutes. And they get the block on Geist. And Miles will go to the line. And a technical foul called on Geist, who has been in 
exploding the last couple minutes. Yeah. There's the step through. Guys not set. Yeah, not set and falling. And he obviously said something to James Breeding. Guy's an interesting guy. We mentioned he played for Billy Gillespie at Ranger Junior College. He played for a great high school coach at Mishawaka Penn in Indiana, Al Rhodes. And then he transferred his senior year to another school, played with Caleb Swan again. But trust me, Al Rhodes is one of the best coaches in the state of Indiana, and he left that program before his senior year. I'd like to see Geis tossing down to that big guy. That must have been a pretty good combo. Yes, it was, as a matter of fact. Played one year. All right, now Miles is going to shoot the two-shot foul. And West Virginia has a chance to get into single figures. Miles had been great the first two games of this tournament. I think it's been a better night for yeah. him. Absolutely. He's had a couple big nights this year, and he's going to have to be more of a he's going to take on a more expanded scoring role for this team until Ahmad comes back. Pressure. They get it to Barnett. Where do they go here? I get the ball to I, I do something with Porter and make sure he touches it at some point. Robertson. Oh, oh what a great cut. Barnett with the slam. Terrific move. He got behind the defense and used that athleticism we've been talking about. Wow. Big basket and it's back to 10. Panade trying to post up. He walked. Yeah, he did. Watch the drive right here in the dish because Barnett gets behind the help. You see Miles loses Barnett. And terrific drop off by Robertson. Phillips spinning, feet inside, now a loose ball. Phillips will launch. Great job by Jonte Porter again. Did you see him use his body to seal the defender inside? How about this kid? He's been sensational. Yep. Watch the block out right here. You talk about high basketball IQ. Watch the shot go up. And without fouling, he's just going to seal Carter inside. And then he's not a great athlete, so watch the little up and under just to draw some contact on Kanate. Foul. Wait, did they just get they got the tech on? He's gone. Kanate, so he's done. Yep. I mean, he just got a tech while he was standing right next to Bob Huggins, so I don't. So he's clapping. Okay. Got to let that go. He's talking a little bit. Well, there wasn't a, you know, he well, he walked by the official, John. On his way to the bench. If we can run it back. He walked by the official and was mouthing. We don't know what he said, obviously. But in the, uh, in the opinion of the official, it was enough to warrant a technical. They've handed out some technicals in this tournament. Yes, they sure have. Yep. And 
Now, we don't know what he said, but watch him. He's going to walk by. I could see it on the other angle. Let's hope we could see it. Right there. You see the official react to what he said? Well, that's a big swing. Wesley Harris trying to create something there. Got a little out of control. Harris per year with his fourth. And Wesley Harris has given Bob Huggins a lot of energy tonight. Yeah. Both ends. Remember, this was a junior college transfer who redshirted last year because of an injury. It's a hand injury? Yes, and, it, and he's very fortunate because his junior college coach could have played him, Coach Matson. Down at Lawson State. Could have played him last January, and he, and he thought, well, you know what? It, he's only going to play half a year. Why not play three at the Division I level? So that was very self, selfless of his coach. Lead back to 11. Here's the pressure. Toss up ahead with Bolden back in the game. Robertson, Jante Porter lost it. Carter comes away with it. Carter inside, hangs, and they get a foul on Jonte Porter. Carter going right at him. Yes, and it, here's why. If Jonte Porter is established inside the circle, if he would jump and act like he's blocking the shot. Now watch this. By rule, they've got Porter inside the circle, and so he's vertical, John, but that's a blocking foul. If he would have jumped straight up, a la Roy Hibbert, as you pointed out throughout this tournament, it would not have been a foul call. And that's something that the young freshman is going to figure out quickly. It's big because Carter's got 19 points, but Porter has four fouls. So you got Porter with four. And per year with four. And Tillman checks back in with three. If I'm West Virginia with Tillman in the game, I'm driving it at the big guy because he's very foul prone. All free throws for West Virginia allow them to set their pressure up. A lot of pressure on there Phillips. There's a takeaway. Bolden to Bender. Don't need a tough shot. I would drive it. Carter, a little off balance, buries it. And West Virginia has two fouls to give before they're in a bonus. Look at Took this. it away again. Carter left hand. He is something else. And they get a foul on Bolden. Well, if you want to know why Javon Carter is thought of as one of the best defensive guards in the country, we'll show you. Take a look now. Just rakes at the ball, gives it up, Phillips, and he converts at the other end. An 8-0 run. And Carter now with 24. Bob Huggins is telling Beetle Bolden, you don't need to foul unnecessarily. We need you out there. He's giving him a lecture on the sideline. Expect Bolden to be back soon because of his offense. More West Virginia pressure here. So the foul will be on Miles, his third. I, the, the official made that call from 60 feet away. Now, he might have had a good angle. Because of the foul, John, remember, Barnett can still run the baseline, even though there was a foul. 
They'll get it into Geis. Missouri's turned it over six times in their last eight possessions. Geis with Harler on it. Under four to go, five point game. Per year. And he travels. Yes. Seven turnovers in their last nine possessions. Our under four timeout, the Mountaineers have chipped away and they're within five. West Virginia within five. 344 to go. It's our championship game. John Chambi, Fran Frischilla. And in the second half, it's that pressure that's been the difference. 16 points off turnovers since the break for West Virginia. And the run is 16-5. Now the question for Conzo Martin is, you've got Porter, who's been tremendous in this game with four. When do you bring him back? Per year on the court right now has four. Beetle Bolden is back after the scolding from Huggins because of his offense. And John, although Carter and uh, Miles have 42 points between them, I believe, Bolden is a guy that can heat up as well, so yep. watch out for him. And again, Kanate has fouled out. We'll see how long Conzo Martin waits to bring Jante Porter back in. Post up. Miles inside. Quick yep. release and yep. one. That's great coaching right there. They ran Bolden off a double on the left side as a decoy, and Miles was all by himself on that other block. Too late, and who fouls? The freshman. And Jante Porter checking back in. Porter replacing Tillman. And we got ourselves a good one. 3.32 to go in the championship. Miles Shore can't complete the three-point play. West Virginia at the bonus. So any fouls, Missouri will shoot free throws. Wow, another steal. Miles at Porter, lays it in, and it's a one-point game. Amazing. But this is Press Virginia. And if you haven't seen this before, it can rattle you, and that's where Missouri is right now. Well, he spun again, almost got picked, guys. Porter needs some help. And Barnett almost lost it. Now, Roberts into Geist. Shot clock's at five. You ever played hot potato? Because that's what this looks like. Geist, kind of a double pump. Rebound, Mountaineers. Golden up ahead, Miles. West Virginia, a chance to take the lead here. Open threes or drives because every foul will be two free throws. Carter kick out, Harris. Corner three, Carter. Oh, what a rebound by Barnett. Huge rebound Woo! by Jordan Barnett. Went right over Bender without fouling. Pretty amazing since Kanate fouled out West Virginia on a 12-3 run. Fouled out with a technical foul. At the fifth foul. And they get the foul on Carter. That'll be number four. And Geist is going to see white jerseys in his sleep tonight. Yeah, you're not kidding. He's got a chance to atone with two free throws right here. Carl Hess almost came up with a block right there. West Virginia calls timeout. I mean, this is straight up, you know, from the movie Spinal Tap, ours go to 11. I mean, this is West Virginia taking that pressure, Fran Fraschilla, to another level. We've seen them get after it hard before and play hard here tonight, but they have taken the pressure and the level of it even higher. 
Back here courtside, John Chomby and Fran Fraschilla. We got ourselves a one-point game. A furious comeback from the Mountaineers, and no real surprise how they've done it. That defense just rattling Missouri. Yeah, and I think what really helped West Virginia is not being in the bonus on the defensive end. So with two or three team fouls, they were really able to ratchet up the aggressiveness. And, of course, Carter particularly comes up with some huge steals. Now they have to be a little more cautious because they're at the bonus, and uh, you don't want Missouri to win this game at the foul line. Carter has four fouls on the West Virginia side. Meanwhile, you've got Jonte Porter with four, per year with four, and Tillman with four. But Javon Carter, he's their guy. He leads the way. 15 second-half points at 24 overall. Yeah, but John, one of the things you and I have talked about is we'll see Carter all season in the Big 12 is times have changed at West Virginia. He has to become more of a scorer to go with that tremendous defensive player that we know he is. And at times, he's got to be more selfish offensively. But here is where he really dominates the game on the defensive end. Just a sensational player. The Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year, three times first team all defense in the Big 12. And we get ourselves a one-point game. And Geis, the front end, knocks it down. George Geis gets it both. Yep, hadn't had a great game tonight, but I love his toughness. Two minutes to go in this one, and the deficit is three for the Mountaineers. Carter gets inside, left hand, and I think Porter might have gotten a piece of it. Carter wanted a foul call. Now what else is new? Jonte Porter's been everywhere tonight. If your guys do not spin dribble. Barnett inside. And they're going to get a foul. It'll go the other way. I think they got Porter for pushing off, John. It's Jonte Porter. That's his fifth, and he is done for the night. A little nudge underneath, and the West Virginia player, I think it was Teddy Allen, went flying. Take a look now. This is a great post-up by Barnett. And watch Porter come inside. And you see Harris is going to be the guy shooting the free throws because he went flying out of the way. Harris 57% coming in. 127 to go. Good news is he's got two. Eight points tonight for Wesley Harris. We've seen an abundance of lefties in this <laughs> tourney. With Lovett, and Ponds, and Porter. Chris Mullen. Chris Mullen. <laughs> One point game, 127 to go. Barnett up ahead. He's been a key piece for Mizzou here in this one. Holden on Geist. Harris steps out. Shot clock winding down. Cassius Robertson. At the rim, has it rejected? That was Harris, right? Indeed. Looked like Inspector Gadget because Robertson was going to scoop it. That was a really good possession by West Virginia. The ball screens were pretty much incapacitated because of the help. I like Carter here. Carter got it! 24-23 like was the last time they led. I like him a little more. Wow. And Barnett 
They'll get the timeout for Missouri. This guy. Yep. John, what have we said for three nights? This season, the times have changed. Players have graduated. And it's Carter's time. And he's got to be selfish. If he's not selfish, he hurts the team. Javon Carter's got 27. Sports Center coming up tonight, 1 a.m. Eastern time. Matchup of the day, the Saints and the Rams. And then the Volunteers canceling the Shiano deal. Sports Center will have more on that and a huge weekend of college basketball, including recap of the PK-80. And, of course, our championship here in Orlando, the Advocare Invitational. Shiano, man, those, those volunteer football fans, they are clueless. Here's what I know. If West Virginia wins this game, Javon Carter is going to be the MVP of this tournament no now. No question. Yeah. Javon Carter with the monster three. But you're right. You said it first game where... He needs to be their shot maker, and he is the one guy that consistently, along with Miles, but he can get his own offense. Yes, he can. Now, here's what I'm looking at for West Virginia. They have five interchangeable parts. The one post-up player is per year, maybe Barnett, okay, so two. But what this means with five interchangeable parts is any dribble ats, dribble weave actions, pick and rolls means that West Virginia, if they want, can switch. At the point of the screen but they must keep Missouri off the offensive glass because they're small look at this guys and they get the shove it'll go on miles they didn't watch they didn't switch this see the confusion and then there's the push by miles Is a one and one or a two shot foul? What are we saying? They're going to say a one and one. Two point game. So yep. Geist has to hit them both in order to tie this up. See, Miles should have switched that. Geist two for two. Missed it. And they foul Miles. And he'll march down to the other end. And shoot two free throws. Bob Huggins is out of timeouts. I would huddle my guys up quickly right now. And they are. See, they're doing it on their own at midcourt with, with uh, the, the coach on the floor, Carter. And Carter's telling these guys, we're switching everything. So Miles to the line. Boy, Beetle Bolden did just something cool. He went to Harla and he relayed the defensive game plan in case Harla comes in for Bolden. Miles been sensational from the line. Now 11 out of 12. And Harler checks in for Bolden. Yep. Good communication. Coaching on the floor right now. Well done. Missouri whether they're down three or four, does not need a desperation three, John. They can drive it and get the quick two. The lead is four for West Virginia. Miles and Carter have been sensational. There's the switch. Robertson on the baseline. Kick out. Barnett, triple. No good. Per year puts it in. And it's back to a two-point game. Kevin Perrier with the offensive rebound. And now the pressure. 
West Virginia doesn't have a timeout. And they get the foul, and Miles back down to the other end. Tell you what I like about that. The clock stopped on the basket. Conzo Martin did not waste a timeout, and yet his team jumped into a press, and they got what they wanted. Chance to steal it. Quick foul. And still 8.4 to Absolutely. go. Absolutely. Plenty of time. Now they call the timeout. Carter and Miles with 51, but Javon Carter defensively just sensational. It's our AdroCare player of the game, and Javon with 27 points, the senior from Maywood, Illinois, Proviso East, same high school that produced Doc Rivers, D. Brown, Michael Finley. And this guy has put together quite a career, but the two seniors, the experience, and look, there's 8.4 left, and West Virginia's up two miles about to go to the line, but Fran, it's hard to run away from the idea that this is a West Virginia team still trying to figure out its identity, but what they know is they have two seniors in the backcourt yes. that have won a ton of games and know how to win, and they let them. How about 84 and 29 since the start of their freshman year? Three NCAAs, a sweet 16. Everything from Missouri will be dependent on the first free throw. Miles has been great from the line. 12 out of 13. Bangs another. Now, let's talk strategy. If Missouri, if this is a miss free throw, Missouri's got to be able to get a three up. West Virginia has two choices, foul or switch everything. If he makes this, it's a little harder for the Tigers. Got okay. him both. And now the pressure. Harris. Parler. Oh, I don't wow. think so. I do not wow. think so. I thought Chase Horror ran through the passing lane. I thought he just reached in and hit the ball off of Harris. Now we were sitting right here, John. There's it. The, watch this now. I, I don't know. I, I just don't, you know, maybe the left arm, the but left that's arm incidental. Is the only, is the only but how does the official see it from across the court? Now, if you're Missouri, let's flip it. Make the first. And you miss the second on oh, purpose? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Yep. They don't have a timeout where they can foul and set up full court. But have you practiced a missed free throw play right here? Okay, they're not going to do it. So now they have to press. And if they steal it, they go right to the rim. Okay, plenty of strategy left here. Five fouls, uh, Geist, so he is done. And Van Leer will check back in. Up next, Washington State and San Diego State, the championship of the Wooden Legacy. So Geist is done. Strategy does not start. We won't talk strategy till after this free throw. Carter six for six in the game from the line. He makes this. The odds are nearly impossible for Missouri. If he misses, John, 
Whoever gets the rebound has at least three dribbles. Move. 29 and a new career high for Javon Carter. What a performance. And West Virginia, they're your champs. The Advocare Invitational, Fran Fraschilla, they showed a lot tonight. They sure did. Used to winning. Great effort by Missouri as they try to build a winning culture, but the Mountaineers already have that culture. Carter and Miles, those two combining for 55 points as they play Country Roads. What a job by as experienced a backcourt as there is in a Power 5 conference. No, no question. Uh, they were behind the eight ball the entire night. Foul trouble in the first half. But obviously, a winning culture. 83-79, the final for Fran.